Hey guys, it's Cart123 today, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but I actually got a new camera, so this is going to change a lot of things on this channel, and I'm very excited for I'll be able to actually start doing some of the skits that I have, because I have a really cool, like, bendy tripod, and I'll be able to do way better quality videos I've always tried to do, so I'm very excited, and if you are too, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, you guys know the drill. And as you saw from the title of the video, I'm just going to talk a little bit about my intuitive eating journey. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions, especially in the intuitive eating support group that I have on Facebook. And I'm an admin on there. And, um, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about it. I think it's good to know where everybody came from and how they got there and how they're doing. So I started off with a really, really bad um, eating disorder it got really really bad and if you guys want to learn more just hit the link down below in the description or right up here and um, that pretty much explains my eating disorder in detail and I think it's very important just to know where people come from so basically I was struggling with that I was struggling with diet culture my entire life and then I was just like oh my god I want to live I want to be a person I'm sick of tracking calories I'm sick of like killing myself with exercise and I lost way too much weight way too quickly and I got really really sick and I was in the ER and it was just really bad so I decided like hey I want to free myself from this I'm sick of living this way you know like why am I even living this way anymore and I can understand people being concerned about like health or their weight or whatever but if you guys look up healthy at every size which is backed by science um, you find out that, you know, just as long as you're treating your body well, you're giving your body the movement it needs, and you're treating it with good nutritious food, then you're going to be fine, you know? So I started looking into that and researching, which I think is very important if you're thinking about intuitive eating, or even if you're still practicing intuitive eating, I think it's good to get research and know what you're doing. Um, just really solidify those beliefs, principles, and values in your head when you feel weak or when ED is fighting back so you know like I am not my thoughts which I think is very important so I started doing research and I came across intuitive eating now in my area we don't have any eating disorder rehab centers or anything like that and that's originally what I really wanted to do but then obviously the closest one was gonna be in Massachusetts and I can't travel that far so I decided to take this journey alone I created a really good support system with my boyfriend and some of my other friends. Some parts of my family are still stuck in diet culture. I talk to them about some of the things, but not all my main struggles, simply because they're not in the same place I am right now. But when I need to talk to them about something small, obviously they can be a support group. My boyfriend is naturally of an extremely intuitive eater. He's never been on a diet in his life, and he eats when he's hungry, he stops when he's full, and he eats what he wants. He is my main source of support throughout this journey. I also use the Facebook intuitive eating support group as I said before I am an admin and we are all human we all have our moments and we all need support no matter where we are in this journey and I think that's extremely important to have a social media background and speaking of social media I also think it's a really good idea to weed through your social media if you have a lot of fitness gurus which are really focused on like counting macros or anything like that cut them out of your uh, social media you know because if you have the constant like super skinny, super model, bodybuilder, just, you know, scrolling through, it's gonna wear down on you. So you wanna, for me personally, it took me a long time to weed through all of my Instagram and my Facebook, but I added a lot of body positivity people. I added a lot of spirituality pages. Um, for you, those of you that don't know, I'm actually not Christian, I'm pagan. So I found like a lot of like, you know, like the hippie Buddha, pages because that's pretty much where I align myself with but if you're Christian or whatever religion you are just feel free to add a lot more of your faith-based pages that also helps within this journey add a lot of people who are intuitive eaters and things like that so once you weed through all your social media you do your research I decided to buy the book and get the workbook that goes with it and together I think it was like 30 35 dollars I will again link both those books within the description for you I personally really recommend getting both reading a chapter working on the workbook reading a chapter working on the workbook and even when you're done it's still not going to 100% be set in stone this is who you are 
this is something you always have to consistently work with. It's way easier to just like jump on a diet with a bunch of these stupid strict rules that are against your body's nature, starve your body, kill your metabolism, and keep going on this horrible diet track. It's way easier to do that rather than really tune into yourself, try to listen to what your body's telling you, try to stop when you're full, and all these other things. I have been eating intuitively since April, and that is when I officially started my recovery. I am also feeling like I'm starting into like a new phase of intuitive eating also, but I'm gonna talk about the first phase that I kind of went through. If you've been through years of like restriction and dieting and over-exercising, all this other stuff, you, when you start intuitive eating, you're gonna feel the freedom. You're gonna be like, oh my god, I can have candy, I can have cookies, I can have ice cream, I can have all these things. And that is perfectly awesome. Completely allow that permission for yourself to eat it and try to lose the guilt that comes with these foods because, let's be real, they're delicious, they're amazing, love them. And once you start eating those foods, you're gonna notice you're probably gonna eat a lot of them. You're probably going to overeat sometimes, undereat other times, eat too much other times. But just remember, this phase that you're going through is trying to break what diet culture has said. And you are trying to learn, relearn your body's intuitive instincts. When we're born as children, we know when we're hungry, we know to stop when we're full, and that's it. As we start growing up, we get surrounded by all these new weird food rules, like carbs are bad, which they're not, they're important and like stuff about fats and proteins and cut calories, cut this, cut that, blah, 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 blah. And it really messes with us. It messes with our metabolism. It messes up our insides. It messes up all sorts of other things because our bodies don't know that. Our bodies are like, like no carbs. We're starving. There's no carbs right now. And when you do finally break and have some carbs, you're probably more likely than not going to be a bit. When you first start on this phase, pretty much, there's probably going to be a lot of eating a lot of fun food which is amazing you like buy a lot of these different things you get to try new foods you're spicing up your the way you eat and that in itself is amazing and I'm starting to feel like I'm phasing out of that phase a little bit and like I said I started in April right now it is November and I feel like I'm starting to really tune into my body a lot more for example like for lunch what I'm gonna be having later is I shake and bake some chicken thighs I'm gonna cut that up and I'm gonna put it in some kale and I'm gonna make some homemade uh, salad dressing put some dried cranberries on there it's gonna be great and I'm eating that because I honestly am truly craving that for me it may have taken that many months to start feeling where my body's starting to crave like fruits vegetables and protein and stuff like that but for other people it might take years, some people might take weeks, others might take months. This is your journey and I'm just sharing my personal experience just to try and enrich your journey as well. Lately I've been craving like a lot of like Ezekiel bread and a lot of eggs and I've been craving like a lot of kale and spinach and all sorts of stuff and that's good and it's awesome. And I mean my snack I just had was two little Halloween Reese's and fantastic it was delicious basically I'm at a point though where it can almost get a little bit tricky because people start questioning they're like oh are you on a diet or oh like why do you eat this and like oh well you I just saw you eating a salad yesterday and now you're eating like a Reese's cup what is your issue like there isn't an issue I'm just eating how I want to eat and it's also a big big hurdle to go through with intuitive eating because it is a very lonesome but personal journey and I'm very honored to be able to have the opportunity to take this journey for myself but a lot of people don't get it and when you try to build a support group don't be upset if people don't get it try to find most of the strength within yourself and if you do have a support group online or in you know real life that's amazing but a lot of people aren't necessarily going to get it at first a lot of people are still sucked into this diet culture and like this is bad and this is good and blah 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 so just remember to have patience and give yourself a lot of compassion and kindness because this is a very very difficult journey to go on but I am very happy I've done it and this is where I'm kind of at right now a lot of people get concerned about their weight which is very common especially for chronic dieters or people with ED such as myself and in the beginning for me, I was an overachiever, and I'm not going to share any numbers because I think 
it's just kind of my own business, you know. I did gain quite a bit and I think it was very important and at this point in time my weight has normalized down to where I started and I'm actually starting to lose. This is not case with everybody. Some people gain and stay, some people gain and then normalize, some people gain, lose, it depends on the person. But don't go into this thinking like it's another fad diet because it's really not. It's a way of living, it's a way of listening to your body, really trying to figure out what you're craving, really trying to eat till you're hung eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. Basics well not basic stuff, but stuff we're born with that has been punched down and stuffed down by like all these diet books and magazines and photoshopped images and all these things. Another important part of intuitive eating is trying to learn to like yourself. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite when I say this, okay? I have horrible self-esteem. But at least I recognize that. And it's something I try to work with every single day of my life. So, you'll have some really good days where you're like, I look kind of cute today. Like, oh, I'm kind of rocking it today. And then other days you just don't want to get out of bed because you just feel so bad. That tends to happen a lot when diet culture tries to pick apart people, which nobody's perfect, and they try to make you perfect, which I'm doing in quotes because skinny doesn't equal happy either, which also is another part of intuitive eating, and I think just body positivity in general. If you feel like I can't wear a bikini till I'm skinny, or I can't do this until I'm skinny, like what you're skin, I was skinny before. I got like almost skinny um, when I lost a lot of weight, and then I did things that I thought would make me happy. And I was never happy. I was miserable when I was dieting. I felt horrible. I felt terrible. I was miserable. And like everybody was like, yes, queen, you're doing great. And I was like, I had like 500 calories today and I worked out for two hours and I'm exhausted and I, my stomach hurts and I just feel horrible. You know, like don't let a weight or a size or anything like that dictate what you're going to do in your life. If you want to wear a bikini, freaking do it. I do it. Like oh well I'm chubby who cares like it's my body do what you want man you're you're setting these horrible rules for yourself when you really don't need to like if you want to do it just do it like who cares what other people think you are you like accept it girl you can rock it but anyways sorry this was a little bit tangenty intuitive eating is a lot to talk about there's lots of different subjects with intuitive eating so i tried to wrap it up the best i could if you guys have any more questions comments have a story to tell or have any concerns feel free to email me comment down below like subscribe hit the bell you guys know the drill and i will see you guys later with another video toodles Thank you.